Part 1. You will hear two people discussing an extramural course. Fill in the information you hear on the application form below. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. Now, here is the conversation. Hi, Jenny. What are you doing down here? Oh, hello, Steve. Well, I'm trying to fill in this form, but I'm having a bit of a struggle as I sprained my wrist playing tennis yesterday. Don't worry. I'll do it for you. Let's have your pen. Right, fire away. Mm, let's see. I want to do the drama and theatre studies. I'd like to get the certificate. The course number is uh, 60201. No, sorry, 202. It seems to be on Thursday at 7.30. Yes, well, we don't have to put all that down. Now, I suppose we can call you Miss. Don't be funny. And spell my name right. Hmm. Well, if you'll have a name like Jenny McPherson... Let's see. It's M A C. No. Big M, small C, no A. Right. M C P H E R S O N. Yes, OK. And don't forget it's a capital P, MacPherson. Now, what's your address? Well, I've just moved, so it's 6 Westway Avenue, Longford. Hang on, don't go so fast. 6 Westway Avenue, where? Longford. What's next? Your phone number, daytime and evening. Well, I've only got one, as we can't have calls at school in the daytime, so put down the evening one. 605-4829. 4829, OK. And you're a teacher. How old are you? 29? Mmm, wish I were. No. 32. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. Do they want my date of birth? No, don't seem to. Just age. Uh, how about educational qualifications? Well, I've got a degree in English literature and a diploma in media studies. Media studies, right. Now, have you ever done any of these extramural courses before? No, don't think so. Although I did do something on psychodrama once. But no, it wasn't extramural, was it? That seems to be it, except for the fee. Yes, well, that's the same for all the central courses. I think £25. I suppose I have to include it with this form. <laughs> Looks like it. Uh, do you want me to write the cheque out for you? But uh, you'll have to sign it. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a travel agent discussing a holiday booking with two customers. Look at questions 11 to 13.
Good morning. Can I help you? Yes, good morning. We'd like to book a holiday for July, please. Certainly. Where did you have in mind? Oh, well, we haven't thought a lot about it, really. We'd just like to go somewhere hot, you know. And it must be in July. I see. Well, let's get the dates cleared up first, then we can see about availability. What part of July were you thinking of? Oh, well, you see, we have slightly different holidays. I've got the whole month, except for the last five days. So I could go from the 1st to the 26th. But my friend here doesn't start until the 7th. So I suppose it will have to be the middle two weeks, really. Yes, but I've got to be back before the 23rd. OK. Now, let's find a destination. Before the talk continues, look at questions 14 to 20. As you listen to the second part of the talk, answer the questions. Any preferences? France? Italy? Oh, not France. We went there last year and it was absolutely packed with teenagers, making noise and getting drunk all the time. Yes, it was terrible. We definitely want somewhere quieter this year. <laughs> well, of course, it depends more on the resort rather than the country. There are resorts in every country which cater for the family or the slightly older person. They're usually a shade more expensive, though, as you might expect. Oh, well, we don't mind paying a bit more if it means more peace and quiet, do we? Definitely not. It'll be well worth it. All right. Let's have a look at what we've got on the computer. July. Was it 10 or 14 nights you wanted? Oh, the fortnight, please. Right. Well, let's start with Italy. Um, we've got 14 nights, bed and breakfast in Sorrento for £345 from Manchester on the 14th. Or we've got... No, wait a minute. That's no good for me. We wouldn't get back till the 28th. And I've got to be back at work before that. Ah, yes. Um, how about Sweden? Two weeks? Half board? How much would that be? That would be £540 from Manchester again. Well, £540... Oh, that seems too much. Well, madam, there's a surcharge for the airport and it has a five-star hotel. Oh, well, it's a bit over our budget, really. All right. Let's try somewhere else. How about Portugal? Oh, that sounds great. We've never been there before, have we? Let's see now. We've got 14 nights in Albufeira, half board, from Gatwick, for £385. Albufeira? Oh, wait a minute. Did you say the flight was from London? That's right, from Gatwick. Oh, well, we'd prefer a flight from the north somewhere. Manchester, perhaps, or even Glasgow. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear two university students talking about a music course. First, look at questions 21 to 23.
As you listen, answer the questions. Josie, come in. How are you? I'm good. Can I get you a coffee or anything? No, that's okay. I can't stay long. But you said you wanted to talk to me about that course I'm doing this semester, Music 103. That's right. Actually, I was a bit confused because I thought you were majoring in maths. That's right. I am. I'm doing four maths modules this year, but it's an optional course. You just choose it if you're interested, and you can do it whatever department you're in. Why are you thinking about doing it? Well, I'm not sure. What are the requirements? What? The course requirements. I mean, what do I need to know about music to be accepted on it? I do listen to a lot of music, everything from hip hop and rap to classical, and I can sing, sort of. Well, for a start, one special thing about this course is that it's distance learning. You don't actually have to be at the university to do it, and you don't have lectures. So you've got to be able to work on your own without someone telling you what to do all the time. Oh, oh, no, that should be okay. I reckon. I'm more worried about the actual musical stuff. Like, I don't know how to read music. That doesn't matter. They don't assume that. You'll learn as you go along. How's your maths? Not too bad. Right. Some of it's quite mathematical, so you really need to be strong there. But you play the violin, don't you? I don't play anything. You don't need to. What about computer skills? You're okay there. Yes, reasonably. Does that matter? Yes, I'd say they're essential. Like I said, it's all distance learning, so it's computer based. Before the conversation continues, look at questions twenty-four to thirty. Now listen to the second part of the discussion. What about lectures? You don't attend any. It's all online, so lots of the students aren't here in Canada at all. They're studying from home all over the world. We've got someone from my group in Jamaica, and a couple from Taiwan. Oh, and some from Hong Kong as well. So how does it work? Oh well, there's a multimedia course website on the internet where you can listen. You can listen and watch at the same time, and of course you can do it at your own pace. So if you don't understand something, you just go back. Or if you want some more examples of the music, there are links there to things that you can listen to. There's quite a lot of theory, but it's all done through musical examples, so it's practical at the same time. Like in the last module I did, we looked at a bit of the music from the movie Star Wars. The Darth Vader theme, you know. Dum 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 dum. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Then we looked at a theme from Wagner's Tristan and Isolde. Do you know it? Written in the 1850s, and we could see there were all sorts of parallels between them. And that's a feature of the course. We often look at modern Hollywood themes to illustrate concepts in classical music. Hmm. It sounds really interesting. Do you have a course book? No, we don't use one. We're given a software program called Notability Light, and what it does is it presents what we write, the music we write, really clearly, and it also allows us to play back any piece of music on our computer at home. But that's not all. We can write our own music, quite complex stuff for various instruments, and the program plays it back to us. Plays the actual music. Yes. So it means that your computer is actually your own musical instrument. And we can even submit our finished pieces to our tutor by email. So you do need your own computer, obviously. Yes, with at least sixty-four megabytes of RAM. That's okay. I've got a hundred and twenty-eight. Hmm. Oh, and a CD-ROM and a sound card, of course. No problem. So, how long is the course? It's six months. There are two a year, so you could actually enroll for the next one if you wanted. It starts in January. I started last September, and I finish in February. And how many credits is it? Three. In order to pass, you've got to do six assignments. I'm just doing my fourth one now, and take a final examination.、Oh, anyway, why don't you call round sometime, and I'll show you the sort of things we do. 
You can even listen to some of my music. That would be great. Well, thanks, Josie. Now, are you sure you don't have time for that coffee? That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. I'd like to talk about the changes to our leisure time, and I'll start by talking about lifestyle changes over recent years for women. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. I'd like to talk about the changes to our leisure time, and I'll start by talking about lifestyle changes over recent years for women. As we all know, the wife and mother of the family has traditionally been responsible for organising and completing household tasks for the family. However, particularly over the last decade or so, we have seen a greater number of women continuing to work after marriage and returning to work after having children. This has significantly reduced the amount of time available for household chores. The result is that nowadays the majority of people own and regularly use products such as dishwashers or microwaves. The modern family often considers hours spent on cleaning and cooking as a waste of valuable time, and generally we are all interested in finding ways of reducing the number of hours we need to devote to such tasks. While washing machines have long been thought of as necessities by families, nowadays so too are microwaves and dishwashers. These goods can drastically reduce the amount of time we need to spend running our home and increase the amount of time available not only to go to work, but also to spend on leisure pursuits. As society develops and we become richer, we put more value on our leisure time and our possessions. The richer a society, the more demanding it becomes. People are no longer happy to work long hours for little return. Expensive holidays, expensive clothes and cars all become more important the more materialistic the society in which we live. Acquiring things and joining the race of acquisition means that modern society spends a lot of time and money purchasing unnecessary goods. Although expensive and persuasive marketing techniques are partly responsible, the demand for such goods often comes from young professionals. Those with the money to endlessly upgrade things simply because a better model is made available. Our obsession with the newest and best products available, while good for the economy, can also have a negative impact on the environment. It is not appropriate to overproduce appliances and overuse electricity to keep these unnecessary appliances operating in our homes. We often forget about the damage we have done to and continue to do to the environment. Others opposed to the overuse of appliances and technology also argue that from a social point of view, over-reliance on gadgets means that people are losing the ability to be creative. Traditionally, it was considered an enviable skill to prepare meals night after night for our families. Nowadays, women are more likely to gain approval from others for their success in their careers than their ability in the kitchen. Along with microwaves have come ready-cooked meals, pre-washed vegetables, 
and our reliance on takeaway food when we are too busy to cook it ourselves. While there are obvious advantages and disadvantages to our increasingly active buying behaviour and changing wants and desires, it is likely that our desire to purchase labour-saving items will continue. So it is therefore inevitable that production of such goods will increase. We can only hope to educate ourselves and our children to buy goods we need, not just goods that are available, and we must also consider their environmental impact. In short, moderation is the most important word for the future. I thank you very much for coming today and listening. That is the end of part four. That is your chance to be rude. Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head.